today we have a very special episode. Not really, but let's pretend like it is one. Today I am going to add extra content to my channel because I feel like doing nothing on my channel because I'm actually working on something and I don't want to do some Splatoon 2 North Super Smash Bros. Ultimate yet. So right now let me show you something that I just want to use as a flex. <laughs> okay, so yes, we're back to some more Mega Dimension Neptunia. Not via IIR, nor VII, just V2. <laughs> oh my gosh. Hello everyone, it's me, Jared Gaming here, and welcome to um this game again. And you're probably wondering, well, yes, this is not the version that we actually played already did a playthrough on, but this is the one I spent the most time on. Because um V2 is definitively the better version than V2R. And I learned that after playing through the whole game of V2R and then playing this game. And I discovered, well, yeah, I, I think it is a, uh, a better version. For a good majority. Like, um... Leave mid-range support to me. I'll shoot them down. As you can see, the amount of time I've clocked into this game, I've clocked in 300 and you know, that much hours. And as you can also see, all of my party members are level 999. Max level, baby. Ow, I actually kind of hurt myself. Ouch. Anyways, I just wanted to do this for fun video because I just wanted to, um... If you haven't already watched my full playthrough of the game already, you should probably do that, like, like right now. Like, like right now, don't don't even watch this video until you actually like, you know, watch the entire thing. Okay, got it. All right, let's do this. Anyways, one of the coolest. Oh yeah, actually, before I actually mention. Oh yeah. By the way, look at my shares. Max shares. You know, got gotta flex that. Oh yeah. I don't I don't know if you saw my credits, but look at my credits, like 70 million, I think. And then, uh, yeah, I completed all the, uh, Colosseum battles, including the, uh, DLC ones, which some of them, you know, not fun, but I completed them, and that's what matters. I just wanna, you know, just kinda, kinda flex on all that, you know? Okay, anyways. The real matter of what's the purpose of this video. Um, I wanted to try and play the whole game at level 999. <laughs> Oh yeah, also, these uh, extra conversations that apparently did exist in V2R. Uh, in V2R, there were some things that actually are in V2R that were I thought were originally in just V2, but they are in V2R, but I just missed them because I'm not smart. <laughs> but what's not in V2R is this, the little uh, New Game Plus option. And this, it literally is what you think it is. You get to start the game all over with all your carried items, all your carried credits, all your carried levels, or your carried anything. After Histy's all like, Are you sure you want to do this, Mike? It may not be worth it. And then it will take three days to do it. Like, three days. Actually, you know what? If it's really going to take three days, I guess I'll... I guess I'm... I'll see you guys later. Take care. God bless you guys. I'm just going to head for bed. So it's going to take three days. Well, what did you know? Today is December 19th, and uh, I remember uh, sleeping on uh, December 16th, and uh, now we're here, and uh, yeah. And as you can see right here, it, it literally carries over everything. And you can even like uncheck mark or uncheck mark the things that you want to carry over. So the only thing I don't want to carry over is the characters. And... Honestly, if you want me to do something like that, I can do that for like another like video, like maybe like a whole like blonde only type of thing, which I actually did do, but um, sometimes I know what my audience wants. And what my audience wants, unfortunately, isn't Neptunia stuff. <laughs> oh yeah. And we gotta bypass all the hecking, uh, 
Well, I guess there's really no other way to do it other than... Yeah, there's also a lot of things I bought. Or downloaded, per se. Oh yeah, I haven't seen this intro much, but... It's funny because I remember first time playing this and my audio was a bit messed up. And I didn't even know what Uzume was saying. But now I, I understand. I think I know what she's saying. She's saying like, man, how long have I been in this world? And then, you know, this, this, that, that. Look at all these giants. It's kind of funny because like, I remember like, first time watching this, I was like, what? I know I'm not going to watch this again, but what? What's going on? Anyone, please save me. I wonder who did that intro because like, we never get anything like that for the rest of the whole game. Zero Dimension Neptunia Z. Cause throughout the entire game, we get um so This is why I don't like my PlayStation 4. I remember like first time playing this. What was it like? There were so many things I was lost at. Like for example, Industry. probably the okay, let's skip all this since we already know what's happened and we already know what's up. Freaking Oh, what is it? Neptune? Neptune's gonna wake up and she's all like, yo, I definitely heard something. I'm gonna go check it out. I'm gonna travel across a few states, which apparently, apparently in this game, it was actually just a few blocks, but, um, you know. What I find really interesting about, like, the whole, like, intro right there was, like, it shows off all, the, like, those four, like, giants, right? But we only face one of them twice in the, um, the, the first arc, which is, you know, the zero dimension arc, and we face the rest of the three in the heart dimension arc, which is the last one. And what's also I find really interesting is that they were shown in the intro, but Uzume has no knowledge of the fact that there's four of them. Which, you know, I thought she did, but like as I soon later played through the game, even Uzume said it right there, like, yeah, she had no idea there was four of them, and she thought there was only one. And, um... Admittedly, this game really does leave me in the dark sometimes when I think about it. Is that an okay thing? Sometimes, depending on what game it is. Should it be alright, though? Most of the time? Not really. Neptune? Neptune? Please, wake up! Oh yeah, what I find interesting... Neptune, please! Is that, um, in the V2 version... Not the V2R, but the V2? It has um, extra like filter effects in the um, in some of the cutscenes, like this one for example, the blurred filter along with like the little like eyelid kind of thing that was literally never in V2R for some reason, which you know was supposed to be a remake, which I don't know how that happened, but. Oh come on, give me this isn't the. Huh? Oh yeah, and then in this scene right here, it kind of actually zooms in on the background to show you like, ooh, look where they are. They don't know where they're at. What's going oh, right, on? But right, for right, some right. reason, never happens in V2R okay. for some reason. Well, hey, there's um, there's a lot of things that happen in this game that for some reason are not in V2R for some reason. Here's another thing that I find interesting. This, the first stage right here, it is completely different from how V2R looks. First of all, it looks more lit up. It looks more, um... Games, but, oh well. Neptune, shush. I am in the middle of talking. If, 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 if I hear you open your mouth again, I am going to... What I find really interesting is that it's a lot more reddish. Like, it's, you can clearly see it's a lot more reddish, and there's actually, like, lights lit up. And you can... It's got this bloom effect. In the V2R version, obviously, there is no bloom effect at all. Actually, there's really nothing. It's really just empty in the uh, the V2R version. A scratch? It's, oh, you're right. It's kind of dumb. Did I get this? But, you know, it happens. Also, I'm going to, like, enable some of the stuff. Actually, no, I'm going to enable all of that stuff. Except for the EXE driver. Maybe we don't need that. Um, maybe we don't need the white orb. I definitely don't need the help button. Or wait. Actually, I don't know. This much is nothing. Why is she? Okay. I'm not even gonna have Anyways. So, yes. We only have Neptune and Nepgear. Uh -huh. Level 999. Oh, you're right. I don't know why Nepgear's already, like, partly damaged. Oh. Sure, you 
The game already equipped her to the strongest thing. I don't know why, but it did. I think what I'll also do is I'll equip, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll equip the, uh, the, the later weapons later. Like, you know, the weapons where I get, you know, stronger stats and stuff. I'll probably equip that stuff hmm, later. That's pretty because, um, weird. I already have those, and I already have the cat. DLC weapons. Uh -huh. But right now, I definitely do I not want to spend the time and effort to, um, really you know, about this place that's actually trying to, um, <laughs> configure the combos and stuff. Like but, you know, I'll... Cracks. You're Actually, now that I think about it, I'm probably spouting a bunch of nonsense, and I'll probably still do that regardless. Let's start the tutorial battle. All I really want to know is what happens when we hit this guy. Can we hit this guy with one hit <laughs> from the behind? Let's find out. Yes! Yeah, I know, he didn't deserve it, but, you know, he deserved it, right? I am the CBU candidate of Planetune, after all! Also, again, they equipped Nepgear with one of the stronger weapons and stuff. Huh? Let's get going! Let's like rocket jump. Blue. Let's, uh... I don't know. Ooh, check this out. I wonder what happened oh, yeah. here. What I like hey, about some of these dude, animated cutscenes is top. that if you actually Maybe change their gear and clothing, it stays are. the same. Okay. Like in this cutscene right here, soon? hecking, uh, they're, they're still wearing the clothing that I equipped them. This can't be. So, you know, neptune has got the cute glasses, what, and Neptune's kind of went on the, I actually don't what know. What is this? No way. Just where is this? Neptune's frog face. I don't know why, I, I, I keep thinking that's a frog face every time I see her with those eyes. Hmm. Even though everyone else gets those eyes, I don't know why. There's something about Neptune that when she has that face on, those are frog eyes. It's a frog face. I wonder if any of these, like, hacking stuff even matter. Because we're just, just going to blow through this game. In fact, I don't even know if I'm going to do any, like, save datas and stuff. Because I'm probably just going to keep going. Keep going. Don't save. Just keep going. Just keep going. Just keep going. We're about halfway through evacuation. I'd advise you start heading back now. Thank Playing you. this game for like Besides, the umpteenth time is while, like. They're just gonna be on our tails all night. It's this so is weird. End, right? Like now that I know who all these yeah. characters are, now that I know who like who the heck was on the walkie-talkie, uh -huh. definitely was not some grown man. It was some yeah. fish. Just don't overdo it. He sounds way different. Way different. Oh yeah, I forgot. There's also the uh, that one scene where Uzume, for whatever reason, starts attacking them. Cause why not? You know, Uzume be Uzume. Sometimes you just gotta be on the offense, even to people who are who don't look like robots. Clearly, let's just see. Emergency. Better be an emergency. I don't know about you. I'm taking a hefty amount of damage. Let me just let me get. Can I? Ooh, ooh, that's a hot amount of damage. Let's see. Let's see, my. Let's see which one I take. Twenty. Two hundred and eleven thousand damage or something like that. What is it? No, two thousand. Two hundred sixteen thousand. Very interesting. Yeah, indeed. First time when I didn't even know that they could just run. She can run. Uh, oh gosh. Oh yeah, every time you click on the item shop, it has to give you that message. New item appear. New item appear. New item appear. New item appear. The amount of times I've seen that is actually going to kill me. What are those new items, huh? What are they, huh? What, what are those new items? I don't know about you, but I don't see- Oh, it's right here. <laughs> and guess who uses that? <gasps> Not one of our party members. You know what's also interesting? I don't remember if this was actually part of V2R, but when you check out the shop and the development thing, you actually get like this little like short cutscene of like who's maybe on like, yo, you know, this, this, and that, that. You, you can do all this stuff if you want. But um, again, for whatever reason, that's just not in V2R. 
I find it funny because ultimate jewel. Wait. How much? Oh. Oh. That's what the uh the thing. What is it? The freaking uh, ultimate jewel. The ultimate jewel. Uh, you unlock that when you complete the last DLC Colosseum battle, which is it's dumb. But what I find, I never really initially thought this was used for the, uh, developing the strongest weapons. Well, not literally, but like, in a sense, like, you can, you're just given accessibility to, um, everything. <laughs> everything. Do I want to develop these? I don't know. Is they, are they worth it? I kind of didn't mean to do that, but you know what? I love blonde, so I'm going to do it. <laughs> oh yeah, okay. So, interesting tip, and this is something that I actually doubt anyone actually knows this, but you know how when you, depending on where you're facing or depending on where you are, like if you're like facing behind them, for example, you do like an extreme amount of more damage. Well, to my surprise, it's not about where you are. It's not about where you're positioned. It's actually about where you're facing. So for example, um, if I just go somewhere like right here, you know, like, you know, you do the most amount of damage if you're like right here or something, right? But I can actually do the most amount of damage just simply, just simply right here. Because I'm facing, technically, according to the game, I'm facing in the behind of the fish, which means I should do the most amount of damage to it. And I'll demonstrate it better in the uh, next few bosses, but... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Easy, easy. And it'll probably be demonstrated yeah. a lot more better with uh, bosses that have, like, parts, for example. Area. So, no, we've once we get to that part, wave. then, you know... Here comes a second. I'll show you that. Oh, yeah, the first time freaking Uzume <laughs> goes orange heart form. I remember the first time seeing that. It was uh, pretty interesting. It's like, what is this game? What I think is really weird is that they also kind of show me the hecking, um, oh yeah, action. Oh, so rude of you girls asking who I am. Yeah, my we turn. know who you are. Okay, let me see if it, so that was a critical. It's my turn. Let me just, what? that was another critical. Well, I guess that boss just wasn't a great example. I, I promise you, the whole, like, direction tip, it works. I promise you. And it's a thing. And again, I'll show you it to you and the, uh, the one boss with the, the one part on it. I didn't even notice that that was our first tent right there. Uh, there was a small little part where Uzume gets a little flashback. And then, uh, we see that apparently, um, from, it was just from freaking, um, Neptune being like, Yo, homie, we live in Planeptune. It's, it's kind of funny how that, the idea of the name, didn't even click with me, that, hey, maybe this is Planet 2. Skipping like a lot of these, cause like, I, no, they're, oh wait, let's just skip that one. Cause I don't want to get demonetized like I did the last time. Hilariously enough, my, the freaking first episode when I actually did show off the, um, you know, the scene where they actually get in the shower, YouTube had a hard time, like, determining whether if it was demonetized worthy, or if it was monetized worthy. It had a really troubling time. I literally kept going on my like YouTube studio just to just check it all the time. And I swear, every month it would go from monetized to demonetized, to monetized to demonetized. Hilarious thing too, I am confident to say some of my Neptunian videos are demonetized, not because of the actual video, but because of the thumbnail of the video, episodes, uh, I think, what was it, like, five and I think seven? Maybe eight? The one with the new R thumbnail? Those got monetized, and I'm positive that it's because of the thumbnail. I don't even remember what was the point of going to here anyway. Are they, like, collecting something? Is that what it is? Is that why they literally, like, come all the way out here? Is to collect something? Collect cellular data? Is that why Neptune had her, like, little end gear thing? Collecting cellular data.
I'm pretty sure that's just how Uzume was. And then like, what is it? A troubling past. And then Uzume's all like, you know what? I'm done being nice. <sighs> Tuck your man up. Oh. <laughs> so yeah, there's a small chance someone will- Okay. Oh yeah, again. This is, this is the area that undoubtedly shows the most amount of bloom compared to V2R. Cause oh my goodness, just this bloom is crazy. Like the whole area is kind of like covered in this bluish color and it's really strange. And, com and again, comparing it to V2R where you can like the, the entire place is more detailed and some of the other places that do look like this don't anymore or well, what is it? Because of this bloom effect, it looks like a different place. But if you were to take, if you were to get rid of this, uh, this bluish bloom or this bluish filter kind of thing, I guarantee you, it will look exactly like the one uh, area that just looks like this in Hyper Dimension, where it's literally the same thing as this, except you know it's structured differently and there's no bloom, or there, there's still bloom, but like not. It's not filled with this blue color. What are you staring at, actually? Also, now that I just realized, what is that eye on your tie? Like, I, I know you, it's this Trillion God outfit, but like, what is that eye? Also, let's go over here, because I never even knew you can go down here until I actually did this by accident, and I thought I was trapped. But, you know, apparently you can go down here, and there's literally nothing down here, by the way. Oh, uh, apparently that got me to the event. <laughs> No, the more that I think about it, has anyone ever, like, actually realized that you can go down here? Like, I swear, maybe my, maybe my, uh, my 300 and nearly 40 minutes, or 300 and nearly 40 hours of, um, hecking, um, playing this game has probably, I've probably seen some things that not everyone has seen who's actually played this game. Oh yeah, by the way, in case you're curious, yes, I did, uh, 100% beat the game as well, in terms of trophies. So, yeah, just gotta flex on that. And let's also flex on this thing. Oh yeah, actually, let's go to the shortcut. That's over here, apparently. Apparently there's like shortcuts in this map that for some reason you can visit um, only at the end of the game. <laughs> like, I don't know why, but they already have like built shortcuts in some of these maps that you can only go to, um, what is it? When you're done with the game like it's because of these blocks right here well and all those other blocks too for some reason in this game unlike v2r they start you out in the game where you can like um break anything like these things for example right those are level two blocks but in a v2 which is this version you literally can't break anything until you get like halfway through the game where you can actually like develop an item that allows you to break level one blocks which is funny because not only are you able to do that only halfway through the game, but in a way, it's also a necessity. Because there's one map, which is like before the um, Afi Mojos fight, where you actually need it. And it's... It's kind of dumb, not gonna lie, but what am I talking about? I'm playing a Neptunia game. The way you grind in this game is so dumb. Um, just, just actually ridiculous. Okay, this is the part where I can show you now. So, this boss right here... If I can, actually, I can use an item on it, right? This boss right here has a um a part right in front of it, right? Which has like, you know, a thousand stuff. Do? So, and the only way you can hit it is, you know, if you're in front of it, right? Like, you know, so like, for example, if I were to be like on the side of it, I wouldn't be able to do any damage at all. Here's the thing, though. Um, Actually, this isn't a really good spot. Now, who did you? <laughs> it just missed. Okay. So, you have to be positioned in front of it, right? Well... According to my strat, no, you just have to face the direction the part is at. For example, if I were to be right, for say like over here, you know, clearly not in front of it, clearly unable to actually hit the part, according to the game I can still hit it, I can still break it just fine. I mean, look at that smiley face, so cute. So yeah, it's not about position, it's actually about direction, where are you facing? That's what matters. So I can literally just be facing. I can literally be like right in an angle where I can't really be behind it. All I have to do is just pos make my character kind of face the direction it would be to face behind that enemy. And then, you know, do that hefty amount of damage. Sorry. 
So where I was positioned literally does not matter. It was where Nepgear was facing that does the most amount of damage. That should be the last of them. No, but the, the dog returns and Uzume goes back to. However, ah! <laughs> she does it. Watch me, Umio. I've been waiting. Actually, no. Let's let uh, Uzume have the uh, final touch. And you know the whole direction thing. That's why I've been getting to a, a habit of where my care. I often kind of go to where I need to go, but before I hit, I always switch the direction to the character, to like this, for example, because even though I'm not behind the enemy, the the way the game seems to be programmed is it thinks I'm behind it because Uzume is positioned, or not positioned, but facing as if she was directly behind it. So with that in mind, I should be able to kill it as if I was right behind it. And yeah. It's a victory for hope, dreams, and the latest technology. Sure thing, hon. Yippee! We won! An amazing victory! Pretty sure this is the part where we see the fish. Oh yeah. Fish. Just a freaking <gasps> fish. <laughs> the fish. Let's try going here. Also, yes. Oh, yeah, also, it, it played that little sound effect right there. I'm pretty sure that was Umio, like, good as a cup of tea. Because apparently, again, like I said, there's a lot of things in hacking uh, V2 that's not in V2R, like, even sound effects and cutscenes that don't often happen in V2R at all. You know, it's like. Honestly, it's, it's honestly possible that they got rid of some of the stuff that's in V2 you know, when doing V2R, because they were trying to save all of the, uh, storage memory for the, um, what is it? Hacking, um, the VR stuff, you know? I'm pretty, which, again, I'm pretty sure that's why there's, like, so much stuff that's in V2 that seems to be completely cut out from, um, what is it? V2R? And also, I haven't seen this, but there's... There's this scene right here. Which I... <laughs> didn't even know what... I didn't even know it was, uh, in the game. And they have, a uh, an appropriate reaction. Just... Although, it's kind of weird how they are having the same dream and stuff, but... You know what? It's Neptune News and May. They're part of the same nation. I'm not even gonna question it. Goddess logic and friendship logic. You know what it is with friendship? Apparently, there's actually three different endings in V2, unlike V2R. In V2R, they pretty much just feed you the true ending. Or, you know, the, the good ending, you know? But in this game, there's three endings. There's the ending where you fail, like like, a th like two thirds in the game. There's the other ending where Uzume actually dies and doesn't come back. There's the other ending where I got in the V2R, which again begs the question: What was the purpose of V2R? Of what what was was the team of this game like so excited of the idea of getting a uh, what is it a VR session or um? Did they think they were remaking the game? Oh yeah, I didn't mention it, but again with this map, look how bloomy it is. Like look how like now the map is filled with this pinkish dark color, you know? Like, what was it? And I remember uh, playing freaking um, B2R. The map looked a lot like the one in the hyper dimension, which you know, is a normal type of blossom looking place. But in this one, it actually looks appropriately Appro uh, appropriately like the one it should be, which is, it's all, you know, it looked kind of beautiful, but it's got this darkish bloom effect to it. And you can, and if you look at the sky, you know, freaking cracks in the sky and it's all nighttime and stuff. There's a lot of things in V2 that is not in V2R for some reason. It's strange, but it's a, that's just how it is, and, uh, apparently. See, 
it's so dark. And again, if you were to, go, if I were to go back onto my, uh, what is it? My original uh, playthrough of this game, I'll probably like actually find it, and it'll be like so much more bright we'll than take this. A little break, In right? fact, I'm gonna actually do that right now. Yeah, what what she said. Let's take a little break. I'm pretty hungry. I know. Okay, yeah. As I was correct, um, I'll probably show like an image of it in the uh, what is it, the editing, but it's a lot more different. The difference is that the trees are more brighter, and the sky is hardly seen. Like again, there's this whole blue, darkish bloom effect to this game than there is in V2R or in the Zero Dimension. At least there's a lot of bloom. But, um, in the V2R, there's, like, no bloom at all, which is why I thought this place was, like, in daytime mode out of nowhere for some reason. But in this game, the way it looks makes a lot more sense. But again, V2R, they got rid of all the bloom effect for some reason, and it made it look like as if it was, like, daytime or something. Pretty strange decision, again. Could be that they were I trying to save all the memory there. storage for the VR sessions, but, you know. Oh yeah, I skipped the uh, transformation scene. Also, all the movie scenes, which are just like cutscenes that are like made, you know, before the hacking, um, or that are just made in 480p quality. Um, for some reason, they're the quality of it is a lot more worse in V2R than it is with a, or no, not V2R. The quality of the movie scenes is a lot more worse in this game than it is in V2R for some reason. Which might be one of like the only things that's like actually benefited in the other version. Also, if I'm correct, it should do exactly zero damage. Who's my opponent? Also, when I the, the whole like direction thing, yes, that does work with giants, but not in the same way. Let me uh, give an example. So, as you can see with Neptune, you know, facing freaking dark purple and stuff, you know, doing the max damage and stuff. Yes, we have to do this. And then, if I were to try to do the same for Nepgear, like, let me just have Nepgear just, like, face this direction, because that's where the boss is facing, right? I'll cut through distortion it doesn't, my doesn't actually work, because, number one, it's a special move, yeah. and special moves are kind of like a lock-on target type turn. of thing, so it immediately forces the character to face directly to the thing it's attacking. The only way you can actually do the most damage to giant bosses is you... This is the only time you actually have to position yourself correctly. Unlike all the other enemies where you can just like face a certain direction and even though you're right aside to them, you're still doing an incredible amount of damage. This is the only time where position actually matters over direction. Also special moves for whatever reason don't um uh, Special moves work weird in this game. Like, uh, what is it? You saw my normal attacks, you know, like, one move of one of my normal attacks would do, like, um, what is it, like, 12,000 damage to an enemy, but as you can saw, like, one hit of Neptune's super move, even facing bot, even, like, in the behind, did only, like, 2,400 damage at most. I don't know what it is. Did we do it? Special moves in this game, I don't know if this is the same for any Neptunia game except for V2R, but special moves in the Neptunia games, at least in this one in particular, seem to have a set base stat until, uh, and then like, it slowly gets stronger when you get to level 99, but once you step past level 99, special moves in terms of like special attacks are relatively irrelevant. And it's even worse when you try doing it in the DLC of uh, Colum Colosseum dark bosses because right. ooh, they take a while. So yeah, normal attacks, for whatever reason, is way stronger than special attacks. Is that weird? Absolutely. That is freaking strange. Is there a reason behind it? Maybe. They probably coded it to where the special moves only have a set amount of like, you know, damage it can go up to. And that it's only, and like maybe the special move is only like affected by a certain stat that doesn't, that no longer increases after you get to level 90, after you, you know, step past level 99. Nep gear is so cute. <laughs> Freaking repairing the stuff. And there is so much dialogue in this game. Can't believe I sat out. Huh. So much dialogue in this game. 
The only DLC thing that I actually bought was Nepgia. Yeah, the other version of, Nep of Nepgear, which is, you know, this one right here. And, um, the one who also just said that. If you heard that. And, um, only the weapons and the scouts. The scouts, because apparently they can give me more experience in certain dungeons. And, um, what is it? The weapons, because DLC weapons are just clearly more stronger. Which is also what I'm equipping right now. One thing I'm also not super fond of is that there are so many things in this game that they just already present you stuff that you can't even access yet. Like, again, with the whole, like, blocks that you can break, but you can't even break them until, you know, you're midway through the game. But it's then until you get to, like, the third arc to then you can start doing something about it. Which is, you know, like, 30-something hours in the game. And I don't know, like, there are so many things I saw in the game or you know in some of the dungeons where i know i can get them but like i knew that in some way i was only able to access them like after i actually like started beating the game and stuff so like there were a lot of things that i saw that's just like um you know obviously i just couldn't access because you know for whatever reason i can only like start getting stuff like that like much later into the game also this little tv thing right here Pretty strange, but can be used for some picture. Actually, I could probably use this as like a thumbnail of some sort. Uzo may have like, I can actually use it as a thumbnail actually. Hang on, I'm gonna actually do that right now. Just like, let me just like, hang on. This is the thumbnail of the game right here, or the whole video. Just Uzume, just with the triggered eyes, level 999. <laughs> That would honestly. I'm pretty hungry. Hilariously enough, I am too. Item, huh? See, like, there's so much yeah. in this dungeon, for example. There's so much stuff I can access, but I was never able to access like straight away. Like, I think what would have been nice is if um not everything was presented in a way where I can get them seemingly right away, but I actually can't until I get to like two thirds of the game. I wish instead, it was like, there were some things, like, I wish that you could have the breaker level 1, which is where you can, like, break stuff like that. I wish they already gave you that right off the bat, but instead, you literally just can't break anything. So I think that would have been relatively really nice if they could have, like, allowed it to where, um, you can break at least the level 1 stuff, instead of, like, you just couldn't break anything. Because I think that made that, like, a little frustrating for me. Because, um, again, there was just so many times where I was presented with something. And it's just like, haha, you, you can't use that yet. Because, you know, it's just unactionable yet. Alright, anyways. Again, let me... Oh, Nepgear? What the heck happened? Nepgear, you switched... You, you switched your clothing. Anyways, again, I'm gonna do the thing that I said that works. If I Actually, I'm gonna do it with Neptune since it... Does it a lot better. I'll be serious. Or I can... Let me just see. Emergency. Yeah, that works. See, like, I'm not even positioned in the right way to actually hit it, but instead, I'm facing... Technically, I'm facing forward, even though I'm, like, right aside it, and then... <laughs> boom. It, it breaks I'll for some reason. Well, you know, you, you know why? Because, again, what I said is... The truth. Direction matters. Not position, unless you're fighting the giant bosses. Ten years too early. Sorry, but there's no way I can lose. Oh yeah. Also, the little triangle stuff right there. Um, I in the uh, V2R version, that was replaced with a bunch of like this like treasure box symbol. Apparently, uh, I was supposed to use weird? scouts to um transport them to like certain areas and there was like some like chance that they would actually like find a hidden treasure chest which for whatever reason again i think it's kind of dumb how there's like these hidden treasure chests and the only way you can access them is if you allow a scout to access the area because then it just becomes a like a well again i feel like there's so many things this game presents that you can't even get right off the bat like it would have been nice to have like done something 
and then like the game just reads that and it's like, oh hey, you did this, even though you didn't know you could do this. Here is a hidden treasure chest. Go find it. That would have been nice, but instead, you, you, you just couldn't do that until you got the scouts to do it. And it's, again, it's kind of dumb. It, again, these cutscenes are long. Like, hold on, like, pressing the skip button. And, like, some of these scenes just go on for too long. Why does that one go? Does that, like, like shaking up and down? Why does that go on for so long? It goes on, like, for, like, like, ten whole seconds, I swear. Oh, yeah, we get regular enemies. Watch this. <laughs> <laughs> Can I get both of them? Can you give me both of them? Can I get both of them? Alright, hold up. Oh, 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 Alright, defeated. Next! Looks like we win this match. The one thing I also really hate about the Neptunia games, and I think this is apparently common in literally every Neptunia game, is that there is such a freaking like difference between some enemies that give you experience and some enemies that also give you experience like one thing i hate is how some of the enemies in the game are actually tougher than some of the bosses and then um and then the boss you know being weaker than some of the enemies in the game give you way more experience and it ultimately becomes a thing where there are some Neptunia games and i and like this one for example where you can literally just hacking, uh, you don't even have to grind a lot of the time except for like one or two bosses. And then, um, what is it? Oh yeah, apparently in some of the cutscenes like this one, for some reason, you're given access to, um, well, I mean, this was also an, oh my gosh, it is, whew, super hard to stay on track. One of the things I always hated was just the, you know, the, how they balance the whole experience and stuff. Because, um, what is it? In hecking, um... Because, like, in the earlier times, when you're fighting enemies that only give you, like, 12 experience, but you need, like, 200 experience to level up, and then even then, when you finally level up, it's still not enough to fight the boss. This game requires a little too much patience from you. Or, if you want to be that guy, which I really hate this alternative option, you can just throw money in the game and then just win. Like, the DLC weapons, you can literally just pay $5 to get every single DLC weapon in the game. Well, not every single, but like, some DLC weapons, and they are so absurdly strong that grinding not only becomes a, like, it not only becomes irrelevant, but... What is it? Um... Why would you do it? <laughs> and not only that, but you can even like beast through some of the bosses too. I, re I even remember one of my friends telling me about it. Um, what was it? When I was getting into the um, Neptunia for like the first time, he realized that I was, and he was all like, yo, getting to Neptunia, here's what you should know. Um, blah, 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 et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, make sure you get those DLC uh, stuff. They make the game, you know, much more, you know, easier. And then I was thinking, that's so dumb. Why would I turn on easy mode? I mean, again, I don't know if it's a thing with all JRPGs because they've only, I think the only JRPG I've played other than like Pokemon and this game, for example, is a uh, Dragon Ball Z Attack of the Saiyans. I don't know, there's... Maybe it was apparent in all JRPGs, and I'm just now, like, realizing it. Or maybe I just find it more tedious to grind in this game, I don't know. Neptune, what do you think? What are you thinking, bud? What do you think? Well, here we're like... I wonder if there's anything cool in here. The seam actually bops, Bo. Thanks for making it bop more, bro. Let's actually, uh, go for it. 
Man, imagine dragons like. Oh! Now, let us begin our battle. Yes, our battle, and by our I mean yours and the dragons. And don't worry, buddy. I think it should take absolutely zero. Oh, oh, actually, we can look at the cakes, and then. Then we can just watch Neptune just kind of just slash. Slash and dash. Slash and dash. And then... Tornado. You're ten years too early. That's Uzume's quote. Stop stealing. This is the power of CPU Purple Heart. Ta-da! Right, and this is the part where they shove it in her mouth. Literally. It's nice to meet you. I know your name is Let's Nepgear. Go. Because you are the sweetest. <sighs> so stupid. It it wasn't stupid. And it wasn't a waste. You're still here and you're safe. And that's what matters to me, okay? Nepgear is strange. I mostly say that because she has like the same thing-ish, but way towards Neptune. And then like it's in this game or out of nowhere, that protectiveness personality is way towards Uzume now. Like, forget Neptune. Forget her. Uzume. That's what I find so interesting. Apparently her, like, I need to, you know, I need to, uh, be with my sister at literally all times, no matter what, has been a thing for, um, what is it? You know, Nepgear in all the games, except for this one. Oh, you're that pop-up purple hag! I am not a pop-up purple hag! R4 is so strange. It's kind of funny. Kind of funny. <laughs> the more they think about it, R4 has by far the most hilarious characteristics. She's the most cliche type of villain, but it's so easy to throw her off. Like, just call her something other than R4. She's all like... <sighs> you did not call me that, <sighs> Missy. And then when she gets like, when you kind of feed her into her character, it's like, I don't know, it's just funny. Whoa, like, gross. Being a stalker is like, so totally creepy. Ew. Okay, I know, it's disgusting. But it's okay, because we are max level in the game. You know what that means? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, 76,000 damage. Even a CPU candidate can get things done when it counts. <sighs> Not bad. Oh yeah, we and then freaking Big this. Neptune comes this out of nowhere. She's all like, Woo, what's up guys? <laughs> what do you have? I can't remember what I did. You're so naive. I am Next. defeated! She didn't I even have all like too. the full Our stuff, and she and that still happened. V for victory. That's another game. Whoops. It's another Neptunia and game. Actually, little. actually, let me just. Spit on it. It's another Neptunia game. It's all like, look at that, 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 look at that. Not gonna lie, when I looked at Neptunia for like a split second, she actually looked like a penguin. <laughs> Not gonna lie. Jeez, the freaking dog is so loud. Oh yeah, I don't know why, but I like this a lot. For, for whatever reason. I don't know why. There's just something cute about this scene where it's like, they meet each other, you know, she's still Neptune, then Nepgear's like, okay, I, I know this is gonna be a little weird, but can I call you, you know, big sister? Is that okay? And then big Neptune's are like, she went from, oh, okay, okay, I, I kinda like that, to like, actually, I think you should start calling me that for the rest of your life. I don't know, it's just cute. Anyways, we gotta skip the bath scene before I get demonetized. Cause that, again, with the whole like, that thumbnail part, what is what got me demonetized on episode five. <laughs> Losing money is great. Oh yeah, also, what I think is really interesting about um, V2 is that it has the challenges, and V2R technically also has the challenges, except the difference is you actually get rewards for doing the challenges. Like, for example, um, in this game, when you do, like, I remember seeing, like, the challenges complete thing in V2R, and I obviously had no idea what that was about, but because they literally did nothing other than it was just, like, an accomplishment, 
in this game, um, not only is it an accomplishment, but you actually get a reward for it. Um, in this game, when you do a challenge, you get actually stat boosts. So, for example, um, depending on if your character were to be in the front of the battle for at least like a couple thousand times, they get stat boosts of like extra HP. And when they get like a level 8 type of um, stat boost, they get like an extra boost of something else. Like, for example, special move right here for Nap Gear. You know, I did all these like a couple dozens of times. I got like, you know, plus a handful of them. You know, it's the same thing if I level up. But then when I do it for the 8th level, which, you know, requires me to do it more times than not, um, I get an extra, extra boost of it. There's a lot of challenges for a lot of stuff. And I think the one who has it the most complete is probably Ramen Ram. Mostly because there was this way of how to grind to level 999, and using Ramen Ram is kind of required. Apparently I didn't know this, but I thought Krar or Krosty or however you want to call her, I thought she was like, ex she was like kind of existing to just exist, but apparently she's actually a villain. I didn't know this until I actually started getting into more detail, all the Neptunia stuff. So, I just thought, Krar was just doing this, like, whatever she's doing, because she's kind of a, I'm a bad girl, but no, apparently she's a villain. And, Big Nep just happened to have captured her, and it's like, yo, I heard you can take me to Dimensions, take me to that one. Because, Kurome can clone as many R4s as she needs. Is it overpowered? Yes! Sorry. But then again, so is me. I am the CPU candidate of Planetune after all. Everyone, please, lend me your strength. Also, again, Big Nep is pretty hot. I mean, that should be a no-brainer, right? Also, what well, should be a no-brainer is the you know, actually look at the Why not? Damn! Look at that! I am the CPU candidate of Planetune after all! Some characters can have, you know, multiple different tree routes. Others can only have one, like I did with Neptune. Oh, Actually, let right. me see if I can find, Into uh, one book. for Neptune. <laughs> yeah, see, there's the three. Maybe I should have put them in my- I'm not one to get carried away with this victory. <laughs> You know, despite my, like, hours and hours of playing this game, I still sort of- I can only get, like, a basic understanding of what's happening, but not to a, an extent where I can just, like, yeah, so this, this, that, 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 this, this. You know, it's just really oh, cool on that. Nice to just divert her until the last second. Yeah, and then some complication stuff happens, and more complication stuff happens. Neptune shows up, so all like, I'm here to save the day. To a future without this dummy. I no longer have doubts. Also, didn't notice, but every single boss, like last boss of this arc, has like a special theme to it. So, for example, this one has the uh, the more soul theme. I don't know what it actually is, cause like freaking Japanese text, Japanese stuff. You know, obviously I don't know. But last boss always have like a special. Yeah. Thing. Who's my opponent? And I didn't notice that until I played this game. Which you know, it's quite far. Do something cool. Let's do this acrobatically. Yes, acrobatically. Oh, nice. oh wow, that actually did kill her. It's nice. Nice. I'm a protagonist too! Of course I'd win! Not really, but okay. Okay, thanks. Dimension Neptunia G. And just like that, I am uh, I am an hour and 20 minutes into my recording, and we moved on to another arc that if I were to actually play the game, would have taken me about like mm, 12 hours or so. And I have not saved the game yet. I'm not saving the game until after I complete it. Okay, so, I don't know when you're seeing this outro, but whenever you are, 
Hope you enjoy watching this specific segment. Whatever. You may see this outro a few times, so I don't know. If you enjoyed what you saw, give it a like, share the video, and subscribe to the channel. Comment down below if you like this. And um, comment down below if you want more Neptunia, I guess. I'll see you guys whatever you do next. Take care. God bless you guys. Have a wonderful day. And for me, it's night.